All right, I'm going to call the uh, meeting of September 17, uh, 27th, I'm sorry, uh, to order. I uh, will have a salute to the flag. I'll lead on the salute to the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Roll call. Commissioner Duncan? Here. Commissioner Aguilar? Here. Chair James? Here. And Commissioners Hecht and Jensen are absent. Okay. Are there any corrections to the agenda? Uh, no corrections. I would note that uh, a member of the public has requested to pull the consent item. Right. Okay. Uh, at this time, I'll ask if there's any public comment, if there's anyone in the audience who would like to address uh, the commission on items are a planning commission interest but not specifically on uh, the following agenda so is there anyone who wishes to speak please come forward state your name and address and right there please my name is joanne fights kaufman i live in the north san juan ridge oh, area we're going to are you going to ask me to come up later? We're going to ask you. We're okay. Pro, we're going to pull a consent calendar okay. item, and then we'll ask you to come up then. Okay. Thank you okay. very much for that clarification. Right. And maybe I was a little presumptive there, but I'm going to suggest that we uh, pull a consent calendar item. Is that okay? Yep. Okay. Um, yeah. And then uh, first, see if there's a staff report. Staff? Is there any other? Um, Public comment. Yeah, Mr. James, I, I think the protocol would be to hear the concerns of the member of the public who wishes to pull the item, okay, and allow the applicant to respond. Yeah, and, and first, I was just reminded I'd, I should see if there's anyone else who wishes to address this on public comment. If not, you're invited up to the chair, and if you'd give your name and your address, please. Okay. And I'm assuming you're you're speaking on the annual review of the Ananda Village Comprehensive Master Plan. Correct. Okay. My name is Joanne Fights Kaufman. My physical address is 25155 Profit Way, Nevada City, California, 95959. And I'll note that that's adjacent to Ananda property. And my mailing address is P.O. Box 107 North San Juan, California, 95960. And I appreciate the opportunity to come provide my concerns to you today and why I requested that um, this item be removed from the consent agenda. This, and I'm just going to highlight what I provided in written comments because they're rather lengthy and I don't know if I have a time limit, limit but I'm going to keep it concise and then you can ask me questions if that's appropriate. So this letter follows uh, letters and comments I have provided on the Ananda Community Expansion to the Planning Commission at the hearing and to the County Board of Supervisors prior to the approval for the requested expansion and when that was approved. I further provided written comments on September 18th, 2018 on the agenda for this meeting where the progress report on the expansion was to be on the consent agenda. I requested that this item not be on the consent agenda because there were issues that persisted with the expansion that remain unaddressed. The issues that I have raised at all of these times remains the same. These are um, Concerns on the impacts of the expansion on safe fire egress by the surrounding neighbors and greater North San Juan Ridge community and adequate water levels for the surrounding neighbors. My concerns remain and have increased given the continued increase in fire speed, intensity, and fire size in California. Examples include but are not limited to the evacuation issues in Napa, Sonoma, and car fires in the Mendocino complex. Just last year, the Pleasant Fire in the North San Juan Ridge moved rapidly and my neighborhood was in an evacuation watch zone. I have expertise in fire behavior studies and analysis. I have particular expertise in the science of fast moving, accelerating, and explosive fires. 
I have over 15 years of experience on the fire line, um, particularly looking at this type of behavior and being consulted on it. So all of my background is, is identified in an attachment to this document. In my strong opinion, based on my expertise and experience, that the conclusion that the Ananda expansion has no significant impact on safe fire egress of surrounding neighbors and the Ridge community is not only flawed, it is clearly wrong based upon what has happened on fires in the last 10 years and science on fire behavior. Further, there has been no analysis of the capacity of the roads that the Ananda community would exit out of or onto. This includes Sages and Salmon Mine and Tyler Foot Road. I have reviewed the Ananda Fire Management Plan and can only find analysis of fire road specifications. Although I've been told that the North San Juan Fire Department and CAL FIRE have reviewed the plan in all aspects, including for fire egress, I cannot find a letter from CAL FIRE and the letter from the North San Juan Fire Department only discusses the specifications for fire road width and surface material for a couple of roads. In the CEQA analysis for the Ananda expansion plan, the analysis of transportation circulation only addresses road size and category and normal traffic capacity. And I identify the parts of the Ananda plan and the general plan that pertain to this, as well as the State Board of Forestry Safety Review. So, you know, I don't want to just come here and complain. I want to help offer a solution and a remedy to my concerns. So I did some uh, research into the science that I know and additional research on the science on the evacuation analysis. And what I recommend for this progress report and probably in general for the county to consider is that um, a quantitative state-of-the-art science-based analysis of evacuation capacity for the neighborhood and ridge community given the current population's levels <coughs> and with the planned expanded population levels. And I discuss some of the assumptions that should occur. I believe this should be completed before the progress report is accepted. Now, I'm not throwing out some crazy, complicated analysis. I have included a page in there with um, some references for analysis approaches that I believe your GIS analysts uh, for the county could clearly accomplish without great difficulty. And on the ridge, we have a GIS expert, Steve Beckwith, who has worked with Esri, the company, for a number of years. He helped me locate these analyses. He has respect for your GIS analyst, and I am sure he would help. I would be happy to lend my expertise in terms of fire behavior assumptions as well. Secondly, um, I also have concerns about that linger about the adequacy of mitigation of impacts to water supply and flow in neighbor, neighboring areas. This is really important for people to have water. And with the drought, we've had people where their water um, well levels have sometimes not only drop, but gone dry in the drought. And so, you know, although the uh, Nanda community did very detailed analysis, brought in a great hydrological consultant, and the county agreed to a mitigation strategy where there'd be ongoing monitoring of their water system to see if their water levels declined. Nothing in the mitigation measures includes looking at the water levels of the neighbors. Now, for the North San Juan mine development that's been in and out of, you know, the application process, they included looking at the water supply levels far beyond where that was because they didn't want to make the assumption that those aquifers were not connected. The hydrologist that Ananda hired says, Likely not, but in, unless we did radioisotope tracing, we don't know that for sure. And those connections change. So I would like to see um, that monitoring extended to include the adjacent neighborhood areas at a minimum. My neighborhood was um, monitored for the mine expansion. So if they were looking at that far, it seems like Ananda could readily do that. Um, so, you know, I'm not 
interested in being the citizen that brings up issues. I want to, contrib to contribute to the better of all. Um, to this end, I have helped form a Firewise community in my neighborhood, have served on the past and the board of directors of the California State Fire Safe Council, the North San Juan Fire Department Board, and the Nevada County Fire Safe Council Board. I have been the lead author to successfully obtain grants last year for the Nevada County Fire Safe Council for $1.2 million to fund more intensive and long-lasting fuel clearance along major evacuation roads in the county, working with the Public Works Department, obtain an AmeriCorps crew to help clear ev along evacuation roads in the Firewise communities, and reduce fuels in the Western Nevada County fuel break. So my offer is sincere to help the county, not only my neighborhood, in ensuring that we really looked into whether not only are the roads big enough, are they have the correct surface, do they have turnarounds, will they really support the flow of traffic? And after the 49er fire, um, it was determined that the roads were not adequate for the Lake Wildwood residents to get out in a timely manner. So what happened in that case is another lane was added to Pleasant Valley Road. You know, perhaps the county and Ananda need to consider a mitigation of having a third lane added to Tyler Foot Road, at least in the vicinity there. So as they're turning out, the rest of us can still get out. Or better yet, and perhaps lower impact, a bike lane along Tyler Foot Road that could be used for emergency vehicle um, access as people are moving out. And I've discussed this with the fire chiefs and staff, um, some of them at CAL FIRE, <coughs> some of them at the North San Juan Fire Department, and they thought this was a good idea. So I have ideas to help, and I believe that um, these are not outlandish requests and that I would like to um, contribute to the safety, not just of my neighborhood, but of all. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, questions, Dr. Coffin. or are we done? Any questions from the commission? Uh, staff? Questions, no. Any comments or any that you'd like to make? You have sent up a Another right, uh, staff circulated a uh, report that's in the desk in front right, of us. September, that, dated September 27th, there's a memo here from staff regarding uh, uh, Dr. Coffin's concerns. And they recommend uh, keeping it on the consent calendar. What, what staff recommended is that, that you hear this, but we recommend that, that you um, accept the annual review without changing any of the the elements that are part of the agreement that would going back and changing that agreement would mean going back to the board because the development agreement is uh, part of a resolution that the board approved last may um, and that this was part of the Part of these things are the conditions of approval that were part of the project that was also approved. Okay. Just that uh, the purview of the Planning Commission today is not to reconsider uh, NANDA's use, not as use permit or the mitigation measures that were adopted in the secret document. The statute of limitations for challenging that secret document has come and gone. So the purview of the Planning Commission today is to review whether or not NANDA is acting in good faith with their development agreement and staff has found that they are, and I, I believe the applicant has a presentation as well. Okay. Um, I think uh, the comments that were provided today are accurate, and they probably fit the scenario of most of the county as being of uh, this side as being um, in danger um, if a major conflagration happens. Um, and so I think it is, it's always been my impression that Ananda is very sensitive to fire concerns and keeping, making sure that not only their community but their neighbors also are safe in the event of a catastrophe. Um, but I mean, I think the points are well raised and you know, it's certainly something that maybe the county should be considering and providing that information and if there's a way to get there to provide that information. But right now, this is just acceptance of an annual report, more or less a procedural point to catch us all up. 
Um, and I'm thinking that my interactions with Ananda in the past with, with Peter has been that he is willing to consider if there are good safety issues that they can be part of the solution that they're willing to consider that or to at least lead the discussion yeah. and enact. Yeah, the purpose of the, the item on before us today is really to consider have they met all of the requirements that were made <laughs> required by recommended by the Planning Commission and uh, approved by the Board of Supervisors last year and staff is telling us that they have met all of those requirements and so that's before us tonight that's why it's on or today that's why it's on a consent calendar so the action before us I guess is to have to review that and whether they're meeting those requirements or not Mr. Chair, members of the commission, it's, it's specific to their development agreement and not so much all of the mitigation measures and conditions of approval, but all those items that were in the development agreement that they, the county and the applicant agreed upon right. as a part of their approval process. Right. Paul. And, and if I can just help you, um, the, the statutory code requires substantial evidence that they have complied in good faith with the terms and conditions right. of the development agreement. Which was approved by the board May of 2017. Right. Paul? Well, you took the words right out of my mouth. I was going to say they're doing a good job. But um, there was 10 items that they were mandated to, um, uh, to do, and I think that you are at nine and three quarters. Um, uh, the road, it, it, securing some easements, I believe, or something that's still in the hopper. But um, you know, and, and most of those items, which I'm sure you've read, have to do with, a lot of them have to do with fire. You know, the, uh, the fire <laughs> truck, the um, securing the ponds for fire use, uh, providing a helicopter pad. And to your point, you know, I, I really appreciate your comments because it's, it's, the, it's the horse and the buggy. Um, so to secure safer traffic and fire escape roads, we need to allow development to happen to get those fees, those mitigation fees. But to secure those fees, we want to make sure we have safe roads and safe fire escape. And so those, those you know, it's, it's this, it's, you know, what comes first, the chicken or the egg? And... Um, Anyway, I, I think that when it's all said and done, uh, Ananda is probably making the area of fire, fire safer um, with their vegetation control, their ponds, et cetera, just what I, I mentioned. Um, and as far as the water goes, uh, that's why I think that was really one of my biggest concerns when this project came up is to make sure that, they, um, that the wells weren't being affected. And even Ananda themselves were, you know, they weren't, they were going to stop the development, uh, a future development, if the wells were affected. So I, I think I'm okay moving forward with, uh, as staff has presented that. But I thank you for your comments. Yeah, I make one more comment. As far as the statute of limitations, my understanding is since I've made comments both to this commission and to the Board of Supervisors prior to the approval, and since that time that my legal options remain uh, full. It's pretty clear that you don't, you don't toll your arguments without filing something. But I, I think we all agree we appreciate the comments. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, thank you. Now I'm going to listen to a, more, a very important hearing at the national level. Okay, I think we need a motion to accept the I recommend the report. that we find the property owner has complied in good faith in the terms and conditions of the development agreement during the period under review, and that this review period is hereby concluded. A second. Okay. Okay. Commissioner Duncan? Yes. Commissioner Aguilar? Yes. Chair James? Yes. Um, I propose we direct property owner to resubmit a development agreement annual review application to the planning department on a timely basis for annual review until such time as all phases of the final map have been recorded. Second. Commissioner Duncan? Yes. Commissioner Aguilar? Yes. Commissioner Aguilar? Yes. Commissioner Duncan? Yes. Commissioner Aguilar? Yes. Commissioner Aguilar? Yes
Commissioner Duncan? Yes. Commissioner Aguilar? Yes. Chair James? Yes. All right, we have a public hearing uh, on an application by Campero uh, Propane Service for a conditional use permit proposing the construction and operation of a bulk propane storage and distribution facility located at 12432 Charles Drive in Loma Rica Industrial Park, east of Grass Valley. And the staff report. <coughs> Good afternoon, Commissioners, Chair James. For the record, I'm Janine Martin, Nevada County Associate Planner. I'm here today to present the Campora Propane Service Project, uh, which is a bulk propane storage and distribution facility for your consideration. I will note that the project representative, Mr. Robin Peters, is in the audience today. As you mentioned, Chair, the project is proposed at 12432 Charles Drive. It is within the Loma Rica Industrial Park. The lots within the industrial park are zoned M1, which is the county's light industrial zoning district, and they carry a site performance combining district, which requires compliance with the Loma Rica Drive Industrial Area Plan. The underlining Lying general plan designation for the properties is also industrial. The Loma Rica Industrial Park was created in 1960 to integrate industry into what was then called the Nevada County Air Park and is now referred to as the Nevada County Airport. Zoning and general plan designations of industrial followed for the area in 1965. And then in 2008, the county went further and adopted the Loma Rica Drive Industrial Area Plan. The area plan had the intent of unifying the industrial community and improving the viability of the business community within the Loma Rica Industrial Area. And the Loma Rica Industrial Area Plan includes guidance specific to the industrial park such things as a prohibition on reflective surfaces, and it also relies on the Western Nevada County Design Guidelines and the Land Use and Development Code Standards. If approved today, the project would be located on a one-acre parcel situated between the recently approved ResCom Steel Project on the westerly adjacent piece and Diamond Trust which has been operating on the easterly adjacent piece for many years. Surrounding uses vary, and they include such things as wholesale material suppliers, solar energy installers, welding services, auto repair shops, and the Nevada County Airport. The nearest residence is approximately 700 feet southerly of the project, and there are several intervening um, industrial park parcels between the Campora project area and that residence. A project specific biological inventory was prepared for this site. The biologists noted that there were no uh, special habitat, special plants, or special animals found on the site. The Campora operation of the bulk storage this uh, bulk propane storage and distribution facility includes four administrative personnel that would be on site Monday through Friday, 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. The project also includes four delivery truck drivers who would drive to the site in perso personal vehicles each day and then uh, perform their daily tasks in bobtail delivery trucks. Two service truck drivers would take service trucks that are owned by Campora to and from the site, as well as to their daily tasks. And the project also anticipates occasional customer visits 
people may come to the site uh, for retail bottle filling or to pay their bill in person. All of the administrative work would be conducted within the 2,720 square foot building that's proposed with the project. The project components include a fenced outdoor storage area shown here in orange that would house the three 30,000 gallon propane tanks that are proposed. There would be two security lights uh, on either side of the middle propane tank. And while the Campora business uh, model does not include long-term storage of things uh, like residential tanks, they do um, allow for occasional uh, storage of things like a residential tank that's ready for installation, uh, maybe some gas pipe coil uh, that's needed for an immediate job. So there will be occasional temporary storage, but they don't keep large quantities of things on hand. The project also includes landscaping and signage. And here's a slightly blown up view of the parking lot. It would include two 25 foot aisles for driving, 13 parking spaces that would be used for employees and then the occasional customer or vendor. An underground detention system within the parking lot would handle drainage flows, releasing them at or below pre-project levels. And then I'll also highlight here, within the fence storage area, are four parking spaces for overnight parking of the bobtail delivery trucks. Treated water would be provided by a Nevada Irrigation District, and an on-site septic system would be used for sewage disposal. The proposed building is designed to reflect our rural character, and it would have a bungalow craftsman style design. It would have porches on the front and the west side, so at both parking lots. It would have a gabled roof, vertical board and batten siding, wood trimmed windows and entryways, a medium brown standing seam metal roof, and perhaps, um, Burgundy, I was going to say that in a minute, um, complementary earth tone colors shown here, sorry about that, um, in a light tan with a darker earth tone trim around the windows and doorways, and then a muted burgundy um, entry point. These design elements are as encouraged by the Western Nevada County De Design Guidelines and in compliance as well with the Loma Rica Drive Industrial Area Plan. Similarly, the project landscaping and lighting meet the county standards. The project meets landscaping standards, proposing interior parking lot landscaping meets our shading requirements with the large trees within the parking lot and at the easterly side, or excuse me, the westerly side of the parking lot providing the shade that's required. It pr uh, proposes street buffer landscaping, water conservation through specific landscape design choices, and it uses native plants throughout the project. And then additionally, because the project is within the Grass Valley sphere of influence, the Grass Valley uh, Development Review Committee reviewed the project and a suggestion that they had was to add this landscaping shown here. Where did the mouse go? There we go. Right here at the westerly line. Rescom Steel on the west has a large parking lot there and there's no landscaping between the parking lot and the property line. And this added landscaping will help uh, alleviate views from the adjacent lot into the storage area. As you can also see from the site plan, views into the storage area will be shielded by the street buffer landscaping and then the intervening parking lot landscaping and then the office building itself so that views from Charles Drive won't be looking directly at the propane tanks. Views from the Diamond Trust 
trust property would be shielded by the building and storage racks that Diamond Trust has on their shared property line. And then there's also a considerable amount of existing vegetation above the northerly property line that would shield views into the storage area from that side as well. Project lighting is minimal. There are two security lights proposed on either side of the middle uh, propane tank. They're pole mounted security lights. They'd be 15 feet tall with a luminary bulb at 14 <coughs> feet. Building lighting is also proposed at each of the four building corners and perhaps also at building entry points. All lighting would be fully shielded and down faced so as not to result in glare that could affect nighttime views all in compliance with our lighting requirements. The project proposes two signs. There would be a monument sign to be located in the street buffer landscaping as required. It would be perpendicular to Charles Drive with uh, the sign copy on both sides. And there would also be a sign at the entry on the wall which would match color and design of the monument sign. The 24 and 3 quarter square foot monument sign would be aluminum in a two inch welded steel frame mounted on a river rock base. And the seven and a half square foot wall sign would match the monument sign. And both of these are consistent with our sign standards found in the Western Nevada County design guidelines and the Loma Rica Drive Industrial Area Plan and the Nevada County Land Use and Development Code. The project is located here in compatibility zone D, the traffic pattern zone of the airport land use compatibility plan. This zone <coughs> is outside of the approach and departure zones with individual noise events being the main concern in this zone. And therefore, this zone limits schools, hospitals, and nursing homes as they're sensitive to individual noise events. And the zone also prohibits flight hazard projects, which might include something with tall objects or projects that may cause a visual distraction or one that might have uh, create electronic interference. Uh, bulk propane storage and distributions are specifically allowed in compatibility zone D. The project was reviewed for conformance with a variety of different standards and requirements as a project standalone and as being within compatibility zone D. It was reviewed not only by county agency staff, it was also reviewed by the Airport Land Use Commission, Nevada County Consolidated Fire Protection District, CAL FIRE's Office of the State Fire Marshal, CAL FIRE's Emergency Command Center, and the Grass Valley Air Attack Base. All of these agencies, along with county staff, found that the project was compatible with the airport compatibility zone D, as well as required standards and regulations. These agencies found that the project does not present a safety hazard to those working or residing in the project area. By and large, this project is fairly straightforward, requiring mostly standard conditions of approval and mitigation measures to ensure our standards are met. Typical conditions include protection of birds through pre-construction surveys or construction timing, noise limits through prescribed construction hours, and proper disposal of construction waste such as vegetation or paints. More specific to this project are conditions such as uh, requiring a second grading permit, um, which will be for the location that will receive approximately 2,000 cubic yards of cut that will be generated by the project grading, which is not substantial, but to ensure that both project locations are sufficiently graded to county standards, a second grading permit will be required concurrently with the project grading. 
Additionally, compliance with state and federal regulations related to bulk propane storage, and also because it's within the airport land use compatibility zone, exterior finishes are required to have a 50% or less reflectivity factor. The project is found to be compatible with other uses within the industrial park and upon review of all applicable codes and standards and in coordination with appropriate county and outside agencies, the project as conditioned has been found to be consistent with the airport uh, land use compatibility plan, which allows the bulk propane storage and distribution facilities within compatibility zone D within the industrial general plan and zoning designations, which allow bulk propane storage and distribution facilities with approval of a conditional use permit, has been found to be compatible with the Loma Rica Drive industrial area plan and the Western Nevada County design guidelines, and also with the requirements that came out of a review of the Grass Valley Development Review Committee because it is in the Grass Valley sphere of influence. Therefore, after reviewing the project materials you've been provided with and after hearing any public comments today, staff recommends that the commission adopt the mitigated negative declaration and mitigation monitoring and reporting program, making findings A through C outlined in the staff report, as well as approve the conditional use permit, making findings A through L as found in your staff report. Thank you. Do the commissioners have any questions of staff? Just a quick question. It's more for my own personal edification. The propane, where the propane tanks are is going to be gravel, right? Correct. Now, is that because of um, percent permeability on the lot or just because they wanted it gravel? Um, I don't know whether they wanted it gravel or not, but um, they would have a problem with impervious coverage. Okay. Um, otherwise. otherwise. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What is the code on that? Impervious, no more than? It's 85%. You can have impervious for 85% on a court. Correct, okay. in, in this district. All right, thank you. I have a question. Um, on page six, paragraph three, um, this is just clarification. I don't recall seeing this before. Um, in the airport, recordation of an overflight notification. What does that entail? You know, it's um, it's interesting. It's a uh, it's basically a real estate disclosure agreement. So typically, you would see that more if it was going to be a residential use. It's basically so that when you're signing your million documents, have you bought your property? That you're acknowledging that there will be noise associated with planes flying over you. Um, it's just to allow, obviously, Campora knows. Um, Saying that's in the flight pattern? Correct. Yeah, yeah. Okay. so it's it's just disclosure. Um, it's actually, if you look in the airport land use code, um, it's a little bit discretionary whether they do that for this type of project. And I believe Dan Landon was being a, a bit cautious. Okay, so it's a, a real estate disclosure document, the overflight yeah. notification. It's not something that's performed regularly. No, it's a one-time rec recorded thing, and then people will see it every purchase as it changes hands over the years. Okay. Um, out of curiosity, recently we approved another propane operation in the area. I mean, is there a limit as to how many fa propane facilities? Or, I mean, is there at some point that it could be a problem with so many? No, there's no limit in our code for that. Um, I would imagine that at some point, someone's business model will say there aren't enough customers. There, you know, it will be kind of an equilibrium type okay. of situation where you w won't be desirable to move in if it's already saturated in the market. Um, but to answer your question, no, there's there's no limit. I think we've dealt with about three of them here in the last couple of years. Yeah. There, there are several. I believe that right. there's five. Um, five up there, the Northern Sierra Propane one was approved last fall, uh, is it 2000? I think it was fall of 17, yes. Mm -hmm. um, okay. That one was more interesting. It was right next to neighbors, so there was a lot right. more 
interest. Okay. okay. And then there was a, another notice in here that um, <coughs> the valves or the levers on the tanks would be not located on the top because of concern about falling debris from flight activity. That's true. I. Um, <coughs> that's a standard practice. The, the propane business as a whole is very highly regulated. It's got um, federal and state regulations. Um, so they're very cautious about how that how these tanks are uh, constructed. And that's a common practice. Um, I put that in there because I remembered how much concern there was um, during the Northern Sierra propane project. So I was trying to get out ahead of concerns and alleviate them from the beginning if, if anyone was interested. No one has come or commented to me. I think the location of this one made it so it was less uh, interesting or scary to uh, those around it. So this um, safety feature has been a industry standard for a number of years? Correct. Okay, thank you. Any other questions? Okay, and we'll then ask the applicant if they have a presentation or you'd like to add to the staff's presentation. Would you state your name, please, and your address? Mr. Chairman, members of the Planning Commission, my name's Robin Peters. I'm with Cal State Engineering in Jackson. Uh, we represent Campora facilities throughout Northern California and Western Nevada. The staff report is very comprehensive. Um, covers just about every physical and operational characteristic of the operation. So I don't know that I, I need to go through um, a description of the project. However, I'm happy to answer questions as they come up. I, I would, though, like to say that the Nevada County process, the application process, and the list of application materials is um, very extensive. Uh, more so than in, in many jurisdictions. And and it's clear that the, the net result of that is a better project. And I think uh, application of the ordinance requirements and the Loba Rica Drive industrial uh, area plan and a lot of input from both the, the city of Nevada City and um, county staff at the planning department, a combination of all that input has probably produced one of the better looking facilities in the Loma Rica Industrial Park. Some of the facilities there, um, and I recognize that they, some of them have been there a while, but um, it's clear that more modern application of um, development standards and design standards is producing a better product now than it was in previous decades. So I think we'll find that this facility will, will turn out to be one of the best looking ones in the, in the park. I'm happy to answer any questions you might have okay. about the facility and about <coughs> propane in general. Okay. Are there any questions of the applicant? Paul? I do. Um, and, and I agree. I think you're going to have a gem there. I mean, looking at the architecture and the color scheme and all, and uh, uh, nice proportions to the building. So it's definitely a positive. Um, the question would be the temporary storage of the residential tanks. W in, in the back lot, in the gravel part, is that where they would be? That's correct, yes, okay. behind and, fencing. And about how many per at a time? You know, it comes and goes. Yeah. Um, the, the, it, it's based entirely on the demand for additional services. Um, the, the reason that we don't have a, um, a need for a lot of storage at this location, and, I, and by that I mean storage of tanks waiting to be delivered to a site, is that it's simply a small property. We have one acre to work with, and a large component of that acre, as you saw on the site plan, is devoted to the storage tanks, the fixed tanks, and circulation around those tanks. That eats up a lot of real estate, as well as the building and parking associated with the building. So there simply isn't much area left for storage. If you were to do a Google Earth, uh, Earth search of almost any community where there are um, bulk propane uh, facilities like this, you'll see that some are larger, and the larger ones tend to store large numbers of um, residential tanks. Um, this isn't one of those facilities. There simply isn't the room for it. 
We may have a handful at any given time. You always need a few in case you get a call and need to deliver one quickly. And then there's incidental uh, propane-related equipment that's always stored in a yard like this. So are you thinking like maybe a dozen or something? I would, I would have a hard time finding room for a dozen. For a dozen. And uh, where would they be, the less than a dozen, <laughs> five or six or whatever? Would they be along the retaining wall? And what I'm getting at really is that, it, you know, you do have fencing, and should that fencing have some slots in there? I mean, if, if the city of Grass Valley was concerned on the western side of having some landscaping, don't know what kind of landscaping, I, I don't recall, but, um, yeah. So there on the western side, there's some landscaping to hide the, which I don't think they're going to hide the 30,000 gallon tanks. But, you know, it, it, should that continue or should there be some some slats, those green slats or whatever in the fence where you're going to have the residential storage tanks? That's my, that's my question, really. So where are those tanks going to be, do you think? I, I'd have to say they could be anywhere within that fenced area, which is the gravel area behind okay. the building. Um, and, and I would say that's a call that that the operator will have to make, uh, an operational call that they'll have to make as time goes on. There may be a better place to store them, one better place than another. Um, until the facility is constructed and goes into operation, I'm not sure we'll know exactly where those tanks <laughs> will be. But I would say they could be almost anywhere in there. So do you have okay. like off store site storage somewhere else where when you need a, a bunch of tanks that that you can't store here that you can Kimpora has larger facilities with larger numbers of tanks that they can bring to a facility like this mm -hmm. to then um, deliver to a to a site. That's correct. Okay. We have um, larger properties, uh, multiple acre properties that have much larger storage areas and the ability to, to store large numbers of residential tanks, this um, simply is not one of them. No. Yeah, they're, they're just, as you can see from the site plan, there simply isn't much room left. Right. Yeah. Okay. And I would, I would note that uh, with respect to, to fencing, to, to your point, um, the city of Nevada City was interested in the in, in making sure that the fencing was coated either black or green they weren't concerned about privacy slats um, but they they were concerned that there was no landscaping along the westerly boundary I should say the northwesterly uh, quadrant of the site yes that area right there um, and and that's uh, that was their specific recommendation was to add, this vegetation and to make sure that the fence was coated and, and with those two components they were satisfied. I, I don't know if the Commission has had an opportunity to visit the neighborhood and the Rescom steel site but but it, um, it it's interesting in that it, it appears to be by and large all building and parking lot and there's not much else. Uh, if, the, if the landscaping has arrived yet, I, I haven't seen it. <laughs> but it's, it's quite an expanse of asphalt and steel. And um, I would present that our facility might look a little sharper when it's all said and done uh, than our neighbors. Thank you. Okay. Any other questions? Yeah. Okay. I'll close the public. Oh, uh, Let's see, is there anybody in the audience that wishes to speak to this application? I'll open the public hearing. Okay. Then I'm going to close the public hearing. Any other questions? Do we have a motion? Um, I'll make a motion that we, uh, after reviewing and considering the proposed mid this, this isn't in anybody's territory, is it? Yeah, okay. After reviewing and considering the proposed mitigated negative declaration, adopt the proposed mitigated negative deck EIS 18-0018 attachment 2 and mitigation monitoring and reporting program attach, attachment 1 pursuant to section 15074 
and 15097 of the California CEQA. <coughs> Findings A through C. I'll second it. Commissioner Aguilar? Yes. Commissioner Duncan? Yes. Chair James? Yes. I'd like to make a motion that we approve the proposed conditional use permit CUP 18 dash 0012 subject to the attached conditions and approval shown in attachment one um, making findings a through l pursuant to sections l2 5.6.g and l dash roman numeral 2 5.5.2.c 5 of the nevada county land use and development code i'll second that Commissioner Aguilar? Yes. Commissioner Duncan? Yes. Chair James? Yes. Okay. Uh, any, any uh, pardon me? Is there a 10 day appeal? There is a 10 day appeal. Okay. For all of you out in the audience, there is a 10 day appeal. Uh, discussion of upcoming meetings. Do we have one? Uh, commissioners, we do have one scheduled for October 11th. Uh, it's a Sunset Grove map project, and I believe that's the only item that's on the agenda. Okay. Sunset Grove? Yes. Which district is that? Thank you. Oh. Okay. And what about the second meeting in October? Anything? As of this time, it, it, it doesn't appear we will have anything. Okay. Uh, all right. Any announcements or information items? Just want to announce that uh, today is, uh, well, tomorrow is Todd Herman's last day with the county. He has retired or is retiring. So uh, he's been a great service to us, and we will miss him. Wow, what uh, what a day. Todd's retiring. In nine, yeah, a little more than 29, I that's think. That's amazing. Yeah. What, what, what was his last job? What was he doing right now? Because we hadn't seen him in front of the commission for a long time. Yeah. He's, advanced planning? He's doing a lot of uh, site plan review, customer service um, with working the front counter and running the site plan review function of the department huh. well certainly give them our best i i enjoyed working with them yeah a lot of institutional knowledge well, will lose, yeah unfortunately yeah. yeah um i did want to give a brief update that the board of supervisors considered the adu ordinance that your uh, commission took action on in august and the board did not take any final action at, uh, as of on tuesday they wanted um, a representative from the Mountain Housing Council was there um, with some information regarding uh, short-term rentals and the fact that that entity is coming out with a kind of a policy or a, a study on short-term rentals and its effects on affordable housing and available housing and that's coming out in January and so the board continued any consideration of the ADU ordinance until after that report came out uh, which may have some information that uh, <coughs> that sways one way or the other on how they want to limit or not limit short-term rentals for ADU so uh, I'll let you know when they take it up again but wanted to just report that they considered your recommendations and haven't taken a final motion yet, or final action yet okay um, you know a thought on when there are staff changes such as retirements like this um, most of us have worked with Todd through the years and I think it would be a nice gesture to have a little bit of advance notice so that we could adequately thank them uh, the planning department used to have this really nice tradition where they would come up with a poem and maybe the poem writer is no longer there but I mean acknowledging the you know their participation and their efforts in you know making it work within the department and it was sometimes humorous um, but I think certainly a card from the Commission would have been I think um, welcomed um, so maybe in the future we might have some advance notice so we could get them something maybe Todd was the poem writer I don't <laughs> think so. um, but 
mean, they just, you know, the department, you know, it, the department's sort of like a family of uh, people who worked together over the years through a lot of difficult times and some good times and easy times, but um, planning department certainly has a lot of turmoil and controversy going with most of the projects. So it would be nice to acknowledge staff when there is a turnover and, and they do depart. Okay. Is there going to be a party forum tomorrow? Uh, this evening at uh, Golden Era, I think some people are getting together. And okay. then tomorrow there'll be a, a potluck and cake uh, around noon to 1.30. Okay, thank you. Okay. Anything else? Do we have a motion to adjourn? So move. I'll second it. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you all. <clears throat>